So thank you so much for joining us, Sharik. It's a pleasure meeting you. I wanted to thank understand. You. We have a two wheeler. Right. We have a hatchback. We have a sedan. We have a multi utility vehicle. All powered by different companies. We have Tata. We have Skoda. We have MG, and there are so many other brands. MediaTek is powering. So what exactly is MediaTek Diamond City Auto? If consumers want to understand. Well, that's a very good question. Actually, if you can see, MediaTek right now has multiple portfolio. Mm. It's coming from the fabric semiconductor background. And especially in automotive, uh, when I say that we are expanding, uh, in terms of automotive, we have three basic product lines. One is infotainment, IVI, and carpet. Uh, number two is uh, telematics and connectivity, that means 4G, 5G, NTN, connectivity, satellite communication towards 6G. And the third is Wi Fi, Bluetooth, <coughs> which is going to Wi Fi 5, 6, 7 for in cabin cars, infotainment, as well as for basic. Telematics connectivity. Yeah. These are three segments. Now, when I talk about the cars, if you can see, we have all range of products which can upscale and downscale from fundamental infotainment, cockpit, intelligent cockpit, and also towards uh, high end computing, which mm -hmm. you can see in the cockpit with the fusion uh, of the architecture. And we have maybe you have already know that yeah. we have combined with NVIDIA. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. It's a collaboration to. Uh, with NVIDIA, we're having the computational uh, uh, power of the GPUs and with our own uh, MediaTek SOC. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of synergies together. And we yeah. see the next feature of uh, connected cars, especially the advanced smart car, intelligent car, Correct. are moving and using those uh, infotainment platform of MediaTek. And here is a demo which you can see and yeah. it's still ongoing. Yeah. So I have three different questions and I yeah. we have three different cars. So we'll start with this one first. We'll sit in the car and I have a question. You can answer that. We'll move to the other and the third one then. So Perfect. we can start with this one. Let Please take ahead. the driver's seat. So as you're sitting in the MG Windsor, which is the top selling EV in the country and it is powered by media, I'm sure it's a very proud feeling for you guys also that you're powering the most selling EV in the country, right? So I want to understand how is satellite communication coming into automotive technology? There is a lot of lobbying happening. There is players that are coming in. What do you think? How will satellite communications change the way we drive cars or automotive industry? That's a valid question. So maybe uh, let me take a step back. So, mm -hmm. connectivity is a fundamental enabler of any smart car today, connected car, because connectivity is the lifeline. Correct. So if you're not connected, that means you have no navigation, no information, and no software updates, so nothing. Yeah. So, even for remote functions, when you want to see how is the EV car battery, you check mm -hmm. from your phone, you require connectivity. So, that means con connectivity is required all the time, whether you are in remote parking minus four, you are crossing border, you are going to mountains. Yeah. However, today the situation is we do not have 100% connectivity by tertiary network. Correct. There are gaps, let's say in every area when we go everyday life, yeah. in traffic jams, big cities or outside when we go for minus four parking. So that means we have some gaps in current connectivity. It's not homogeneous. Correct. So this gap is filled by satellite communication. Because satellite covers the globe and mm -hmm. so does all the space. Mm -hmm. So where we do not have tertiary network coverage, by capacity of the technology what MediaTek is providing, it's a standard also in the early 17 and 18 of 3GPP. Mm -hmm. So with NTN, and that's non-terrestrial network and terrestrial network, the handover, seamless handover happens, mm -hmm. giving ubiquitous connectivity and end user experience like you're running your music, it yeah. runs absolutely the same. It doesn't know whether it's terrestrial network or non-terrestrial network. Okay. It switches and for end user, you're connected all the time. So okay. that's, that's the idea that to provide 100% homogeneous, ubiquitous connectivity mm. in everywhere and anywhere. MediaTek is number one in SATCOM today, NTN. Oh, okay. We have demonstrated in the world uh, the first demo of NTN mm -hmm. for narrowband also initially two years back and we have in production. And now uh, we have demonstrated NRNTN in Mobile World Congress in 5GA. And so just to say also, that we are bringing this, exactly, we have yeah. ComputerX2, we are bringing yeah. it. Uh, we have the device ready awesome. and we are waiting for network. So that's, that's our phase of MediaTek. Well, thank you so much for your insightful answer. Now let's move on from the most selling EV to the most selling sedan from Skoda. So let's mm -hmm. sit there and you'll answer my second question. Sure. So we keep hearing about SDVs. What exactly, if you can explain to our viewers, what exactly does SDV mean? You know, it's a buzzword, but a lot of people don't know about it. Correct. Maybe let me try to explain that. So SDV is software defined vehicle. Okay. So uh, when we see the architecture of uh, the car which was earlier. So earlier we have cars with distributed system. That means we have one ECU 
mm. electric component for let's take for connectivity one component for brake system one for some other functions so like that there are thousands of microcontrollers microprocessors mcps yeah. and so hundreds of um, ecus right mm. now this is called distributed distributed system now from distributed system we move the the train towards convergence mm. into many towards one towards a mega ecu that's mm. the part is called sdv that means you'll have one huge hardware with huge computing mm. handling all the multiple microcontrollers as per saying one with huge computing capacity okay so that's the concept so we see the architecture and the trend moving from so many ecus mm. they are converging towards few number of ecus and mm. depending on that we are moving towards a sdv platform mm. which is a scalable platform based on different requirements of the car and you can take functionality for example you can take some function from infotainment yeah. you can combine with connectivity in the same microcontroller same processor oh, yeah. i mean i won't say microcontroller it would be a same computing you can have mm -hmm. right so that's why we're hearing a lot of car makers talk about sdvs now like our vehicle will be sdvs because it's software defined vehicles now Correct. or to do with software because especially in the case of evs it's more about software experience than anything else because there's no engine so what are you trying to do is like refine and make it as promising and experiential as possible for the users in terms of software and experience exactly so yeah. ev the, the fundamental difference is i see an ev is of course that uh, uh, that means if you can see here for each user what do you need so cockpit has become your third home yeah. that means all the functionality in your smart home what you feel when you come with the car it's, you feel exactly same feel and how that means your interface shall be for example you having a teams call mm. now you come to your car like you, you do in office you are connected to a team call with the same level of camera same level of connectivity performance same level of infotainment you can see and stop so that is where we are moving towards and all these will require when you have multiple computing multiple technologies coming together and giving you software diversity and flexibility mm -hmm. so as the platform is piece you have a huge computing and then you can make all your software different stack for different functionality over it Got like it. maybe multiple hypervisor mm -hmm. or whichever way you prefer and that's that that's the beauty of it it's more like a scalable platform and changeable mm -hmm. whenever you want unlike before which is a hard platform you cannot change so if you see the life of a car is like 15 years down the line mm -hmm. you cannot you can can't make any change once mm -hmm. you make the car but in this architecture you have flexibility Correct. you can take out one function you can put update a new one all, yeah. or update a new one or you have a provision to add and keep on enhancing more and more yeah. with the time got it so thank you so much for again your insightful answer we have covered the best electric selling car in india we have touched on chat inside the sedan that is sells best and now it's time to move on to one of the safest and the best selling hatchbacks in the country we shift to the tata tiago So now that we are sitting in Tata Tiago EV, I want to understand how is AI being integrated into the MediaTek Dimensity Auto? So that's a valid question. Today you see the buzzword is AI everywhere. Everywhere. So all the hope. So maybe I'll like to uh, split your question into two segments. Yeah. In terms of Dimensity Auto. Mm -hmm. And uh, so first I'll go with the infotainment. Mm -hmm. So if you see, <coughs> uh, we are running a huge large language LLM model. That's called large language model. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, the AI for running AI, we have uh, multiple type of processes inside. So on top of CPU, we have GPU as well as we have NPU inside. Mm -hmm. So with the different machine learning experiences, we are increasing the customer journey towards a new edge. For example, starting from camera performance. If you mm -hmm. see maybe this morning, uh, as we explained uh, and shown, so if you see the performance of picture, mm -hmm. they improved a lot. with normal cameras because of huge computing and our ai models correct same goes for other sensing same goes for 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 detection same goes for large language models same goes so that means onboard computing has enhanced by using machine learning different models mm -hmm. and using the ai intelligence and giving user an absolute experience what he could feel much near to his home or Uh, a smart cockpit or yeah. you could say it's the best of your experience in terms of sound quality and uh, safety yeah uh, intelligence yeah a sensor sharing all informations have been improved mm. by a delta of huge margin yeah much closer to the real experiences mm -hmm. so that's one segment where i where i just explain ai into infotainment second is 
uh, what I see is in terms of connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we also have connectivity uh, with AI. That means we are trying to understand because as you see the environment of car and smartphone are not the same. Mm -hmm. So car goes to minus four parking, stays there, you leave your car for vacation. You go to crossing borders like in Europe, <laughs> there are multiple countries and there are different networks. Uh, or here you go in some mountains, for example, you have no network. So what happens, you go to, or you cross, uh, let's take a bridge, inside a bridge, a tunnel, and then you lose network. Yeah. So <clears throat> with the AI, what happens, what we're trying to do, because we have more than 2 billion devices every year we sell, so we understand the network performance, network optimization, as well as uh, bad traffic conditions. Mm -hmm. So in terms of automotive, it's very particular, because it's a big car, huge car, and uh, the placement of car and smartphone are the same. So we have customized the traffic modeling, so we understand, for example, when you're entering the tunnel, we understand during the tunnel, normally what happens, the signal becomes bad. Mm -hmm. That means we lost connection. And after we comes out, it takes time to search for the network and then you get connected. That means for some time, you have no connectivity. Correct. But here, with this model, we totally understand. That means before entering the tunnel, we anticipate the situation and we make sure we connect to the next network. That means you are still connected when you're over there. And the response time is very quick. Mm -hmm. For example, you're in the airport mode, yeah. in the parking. So all these things we have with the algorithm, we have enhanced uh, the performance, the time duration to connectivity, and the quality, all three factors with the use of AI. That was the auto. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us, Sharik. It was a pleasure and very insightful to learn from you about Dimensity Auto and how it's really powering most of the cars in India, and not just cars, two-wheelers, and other automotive products. Absolutely pleasure meeting you and I hope to see you again. Thank you so much, Samir. Likewise, hope pleasure. to see you again. Thank you. Savior. Bye. Bye. -bye.